In the demos that follow, I will introduce the schema of the data warehouse, run a series of queries showing the structure of some of the primary tables, and write a series of increasingly complex inner joins. To get started, I have opened Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Management Studio. I'll next select the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse and begin the demo. My file and I will select Use AdventureWorks DW 2012 and execute. I'm now attached to the AdventureWorks DW 2012 and first let's take a look at the data in the data warehouse. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run a select all against the customer table. This gives us a look at the customer table. We have the customer key, the geography key, alternate key, title, first name, last name, birth date, a lot of attributes, many, many fields. A lot of rows for that matter too, but many fields. Let's take a look at a select statement using the concat operator that we learned in an earlier module and just take a look at the name. And we have 18,484 customers. We're going to be doing some work with those customers. So let's find out all the customers. We want their key, their last name, their first name, their yearly income, and we want to know if they own their own home and if their yearly income is greater than $50,000 and we'll order it by yearly income descending. So these are our customers who meet the AND criteria. They satisfy both the income criteria being greater than $50,000 and the homeowner criteria of one equal to home ownership. So now we're going to take a look at all the products that were purchased over the internet by customer Valerie Zo. Her customer key is 17828 and let's start by taking a look at the product information that's available. So here is our product information. The product key, alternate key, subcategory, key, let's see, the English product name. We're going to be dealing primarily with the English product name. So when you're given the instructions that say look up the product name, just use the English product name. In earlier instructions you were told specifically to choose the English product name but from now on as you're going through, if you're told product name, choose English product name unless you're told specifically otherwise. So here's our product information. Before we run this query, which uses the customer table and the product table, let's take a look at our database diagram to see how these tables are connected to one another. So before we run this query, let's take a look at the tables that we're dealing with. We have two. We have the customer dimension table. It's DIM, DIM, customer, the dimension table. And we have the fact table, which is internet sales. If you remember that from our lecture, normally in the star schema, our fact table will be the center of the star and there'll be dimension tables that are attached to it. So let's see how this is done. We'll go into the AdventureWorks DW. Database diagrams are already expanded and I'm going to take a look at Internet Sales. It's a little small, but we'll zoom this. And that's a little too much. We'll zoom to 75. There we go and let's see how these are connected. Here's my fact internet sales. My customer dimension is connected to the internet sales table through the customer key, which is the primary key in the customer table 
and the foreign key in the Internet Sales table. On the other side, we have the product table is connected to the Internet Sales table through the product key, which is the primary key in the product table, and the foreign key in the Internet Sales table. So let's go back to our query, and we have customer connected to the Internet Sales connected to the product table. And in one of your demos you saw how the tables were given an alias and you can give them an alias with the use of as or just simply leaving the as out. It's, it's my habit to use as. It helps remind me of the alias. So I'm choosing the customer key from the customer table which I've named C, the last name from the customer table, first name from the customer table, and the English product name from the product table, which I've named P. So I'm going to select these fields, also have order quantity, unit price, and sales amount, all from the fact table, or the internet sales. So where do these aliases come from? We just make them up. And they're made up basically based on the name of the table. The name of the customer table is C. It starts with a C. Call it C. Product table P. And the fact internet sa sales, it's called F because it's a fact. But you might see me call it I because it's an internet sales table. So it really depends. But we just make them up, but as long as we're consistent in how we use those. But if I have a product table and a production table, I can't name them both P. They have to have different aliases. Start with from the customer table as C with an inner join on the internet sales table as F on the customer key from the customer table is equal to the customer key in the internet table. I'm joining on the primary key to the foreign key. That's normally the way it's done. You're going to look for fields that have the same name. As you saw in the lecture for Module 6, we can join on other fields that contain the same data and have the same data type, but generally it's going to be between the primary key and the foreign key. And then I'm joining from the fact table to the product table and then I'm joining from the fact table to the product table and last comes my where clause looking for this particular customer and let's see what we come up with and there are the sales for our customer 17 628 let's take a look at the next one we'd like to list the customers who have purchased bikes over the internet so let's start by looking at the product category table the product category table, note that bikes is a product category. Here's the product category name, here's the product category. But if we look back at our product table, there is no product category field in the product table but there is a product subcategory key. So we, as we can see from this database diagram, product is connected to the product table through the product subcategory table. So let's see how this works. Again, I've used similar aliases. I have my customer last name, first name, the product name, I'm going to assign C as the alias to the customer table, F as the alias to the internet table, and I'm going to create an inner join to put those together. Then I'm going to join the fact table to the product table 
on the product key which is the common field to those two tables. Then I'm going to join the product table to the subcategory table through the product subcategory key field because that is the common field to both tables and then join the product subcategory table to the product category table through the product category key which is the common field to those two tables where the product category key is equal to one or bikes and so here are the customers who have purchased bikes over the internet as you can see the key to putting together well-constructed joins is understanding how you can get from one table to another table. For that, we need to have a roadmap. One of the best ways to create a roadmap is to create a database diagram. Refer to it often. You can print out portions of it that you're going to use on a regular basis as if I zoom this you can see that that would be a little hard to read but I can do some adjustments and maybe um, take just portions of it and have that roadmap available so that you can see how each table is connected and what the common field is in those two tables and you write from one to the next to the next to get from customer to bikes, I go from customer to the fact table, from the fact table to the product table, from the product table to the product subcategory table, from the product sub subcategory table to the product category table. Again, if we come back here, and I'll zoom up to 75% again, customer table customer key to customer key, product key to product key, product subcategory key to product subcategory key, product category key to product category key. Be consistent, be logical, and follow your roadmap.